So this feels like a continuation of a series. I guess it is, right? So when we last left our hero, we were trying to figure out what Z sub alpha means. So let me help you understand what Z sub alpha means. So that spills over onto the next page here. And I guess I would draw Z sub alpha down here. Let me discuss what Z sub alpha is. Z sub alpha is the point on the standard normal curve yeah, standard normal curve with area equal to alpha in the right tail so basically this area here is alpha, the area in the right tail. Now, one thing I want to be very clear and stress, this notation, which you're going to see it in the rest of the course, you'll see T sub alpha, you see chi square sub alpha, maybe F sub alpha, we'll have a lot of different distributions, but this notation means the area in the right tail always the right tail, regardless of how it looks. Now, this is going to necessitate sometimes that we use the normal curve in a backwards direction. So for instance, um, here, instead of starting out with a Z value and finding the area, we're going to find the z value that corresponds to this area. So we're going to start out with the area and then find the z value. To do that, we're going to use a command that we haven't used yet, which is our norm inverse command. So let me explain how that one's working. These commands will be given to you on the exam. I don't expect that you have these memorized. You probably will because you'll use them so much by then. But the format of that command is going to be norm inverse your value of x and then the mean and then the standard deviation um no true. what's that you don't, have to put true. you don't have to put true in this one yeah good question you don't have to worry about true in this one so in our case if we're working with the standard normal curve which is implied because we're working with a z-score then what we would type in here is equals norm inverse of 0 0.1949. Let me just make sure I got that number right. Yeah, 1949. The mean is 0. The standard deviation is 1. So that's what we should type in. And let's see what z value pops out. Now, quick question, do you expect our z value to be positive or negative? Well, it's to the left of zero, right? So it should be a negative value. Yeah, please. Yes, it will make it, that will make a difference because then you're telling it that the mean is one uh, the standard deviation is zero, and standard deviation of zero can't really happen. I mean, I guess it could if all your data is the same, but uh, in practice, I don't think Google Sheets would like it if you typed in the standard deviation of zero. Uh, all right, so let's move over here, section 6.2, and let's just delete all those so we can start afresh. Equals. Oh, see, so yeah, I guess it is 6.1 still. All right. Yeah, thank you. Let me go back to 6.1 and keep working. So this is uh, so yes. example uh, F. Example F. Is it G? G. Oh, yeah. even, even better. We're farther ahead. Mm, example G. Finally, equals norm inverse 0 
one nine four nine comma zero comma one and we got a negative value now typically speaking I'm in the habit of rounding my z-scores to the nearest hundredth and the reason for that goes back to how we used to have to do it kind of old school when you're using the tables and the author keeps the tables in the book because in his words <clears throat> There's some third world countries that use the book, and there's a few old timers in terms of professors that are kind of wedded to the technology of using the table. The tables only go down to the nearest hundredth. So this is what we're avoiding having to do. If you're using the table, you'd look up that area about 0.1949, and it's right here. So that's negative 0.8 here and then you look up to the top of the column and then you get the other part the 0.06 so that would be working this with the tables uh, I don't think anyone really uses the tables too much anymore in any case we we'll round our z scores to the nearest hundredth unless instructed otherwise Missing the negative. thank you yeah negative Awesome. So would you write this out as like Z and then like 0.1949? Um, if you wanted to write it with that Z notation, that's a great question. If you wanted to write it in the Z notation, you got to keep in mind that it's really the area in the right tail. So if 0.1949 is in the left tail, how much is in the right tail that I'm shading here? Yeah, it'd be one minus that, right? So that would be Z sub 0 0.8051. That'd be what that is. Would you want that at all? Um, no, I don't think I'd ask for that. But what I might ask for instead would be stuff like this, Z sub 0.02. And we're going to spend a little time figuring out these, because these get a little tricky. I mean, some of the, especially some of the first couple, you have to keep in mind what you're being asked for, and in comparison, how Google Sheets works. So let's think about this. Z sub 0 0.02. Let me try and draw that. So Z sub 0 0.02. In words, what would that be? That's the z-score that has what property? Keisha, can you tell me anything about that z-score? I don't know, honestly. All right. Some help? That's going to be the z-score that has how much of the area in the right tail? Can you tell me that much? Yeah. 0.02. So it's going to be out here someplace so that there's only 2% of the area in that right tail. So that's going to be your Z sub 0.02. So 0.02 of the area or 2%. 2% is going to be that area there. But I don't want to type in norm inverse of 0.02. Because that's going to give me the area, it's going to be the point on the z-curve with 2% of the area in the left tail. Hmm. Well, if 2% of the area is in the right tail, how much is in the left tail? 98. So what I want to do is I want to type in this command, except with 0.98 here, instead of the 0.1949. So that's going to look like this equals norm inverse of 0.98 comma 0 comma 1. Now I'm expecting a value to the right of 0. It has to be to the right of 0. Let's see what you're getting. So this is example H. equals 
norm inverse 0.98. Ben, are you going to match what I got? Yep. What'd you get? <laughs> I lost it. My computer turned off because I hadn't used it. Gerald? It's uh, 2.0537. Perfect. So 2.0537. Are you guys getting it? Can you give me a thumbs up on Zoom? Thumbs up on Zoom? All right. Why we're, we're instead of instead of norm distribution? It's because we're we're starting with the area and we want the z value. That's inverse of what we usually do. So in the first part of this lecture, I started out with an, uh, z values and I wanted to find the area. So we're turning the problem around and saying, okay, um, I know the area, I want to find the corresponding z value. That's why we're using the inverse here. So, yeah. Yes, so this curve goes out infinitely in either direction. You can. It's just, uh, it requires calc 2. Yeah. But you, you can find those areas. It's, it's a pretty cool process. But, um, yeah, and what you do is you, you consider the area, say, between, this was what, 2.05? Is that the right number here? Piece of 2.05. So you find the area between 0 and 100, and then 0 to 200, 300, 1,000, 10,000, a million, et cetera. And you, you watch what happens to that, those sequence of values. Eventually, they'll settle down to what's called a limit. And so if you take the limit as, yeah, eventually, yeah, these, this area is, as you go farther and farther out, are going to get so small, it's not going to make a difference. And at that point, you say, okay, that's close enough. Now, exactly how they do it with their software, I don't know. But uh, I can show you in, when you get to CalcTube with me. All right. Let's keep going. Let's try this one. Z sub 0.12. So kind of the same thing as the last one. It's just that now we're trying to find the area to be 12% in the right tail. Now, there's a couple ways you can do these problems, and we'll see that after one more of our examples. But find out what you can about z sub 0.12. Sounds pretty good to me. Let's let me check that here. See if we agree. So equals norm inverse of now I don't want to type in 0.12 what do I want to type in 0.88 so 0 0.88 comma 0 comma 1 and beautiful about 1.1749 so rounded off to the nearest hundredth that would be about 1.17 Now, if you're getting clever, then maybe you're just saying, hey, you know what, I'll just copy this command down here, paste it here, and I just got to make a simple edit to get z sub 0 0.05, which is the next one. What's that edit going to be? Yeah. Instead of inverse of 0.9 or 0.88, I got to put in the inverse of 0.95. So... I'll do that. Uh, so let's just make that a 0.95. Looking good there. Now this next one is kind of interesting. Because this next one is Z sub 0.98. Let's see if we can envision what that's going to mean. Oh, that's a good normal curve. That's good. All right. Happy with that one. 
Z sub 0.98. Can someone describe what that would mean in words? Go ahead. Oh, nice insight. It's exactly the negative of this one up here. So if you, if you were to describe it in picture form, I want 98% of the area in the right tail like this. So this area collectively is going to be 0.98. So that's going to be Z sub 0.98. Remember, it's always the area in the right tail. Now, if you type that in, well, you wouldn't type that one in directly. What you would really have to do is find the area in the left tail. 98% is in the right tail, then 2% is in the left tail. So 0 0.02. And you can calculate that one as norm inverse uh, 0 0.02 comma 0 comma 1. And that should give you negative 2.05. So we're going back to that symmetry that Johnny noticed in the first section, first half of this, is that, oh yeah, these are symmetric. So sometimes if you screw up, you might just be able to recover by saying, oh, well, it's the negative of this. It's the positive of this. Now, I screwed up right here because I gave you the same one twice. So let's make that Z sub 0.92. Let's see if you can't figure out that one. Figure out these last two for me, if you would, please. Z sub 0.92 and Z sub 0.77. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to catch up with my Google Sheet on the previous one. Equals norm inverse 0 0.02 comma 0 comma 1. What's this one going to look like? Z sub 0.92. Victoria? All right, good. Negative 1.41. And the command should be what? Norm inverse. Good, 0 0.8 comma 0 comma 1. And that was what? Negative 1.41. Nice. How about the last one, Chloe? Uh, negative 1.74. Sounds good. Let me just see here, negative. Now, when you type in the command, it's norm inverse of what? Um, uh, point, point point two three. Point three. Good, point two three. Thank you, ladies. Comma zero, comma one, and bam, negative point seven four. Beautiful, beautiful. Are you comfortable with those? Are you okay with getting those? All right. Um, what do you mean the same? Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, with with these, I mean, look, there's there's probably a couple ways you can get those. Um, if you typed in. 0.77, I guess if you have a good mental picture of what's going on here, you can overcome a mistake. So let me take a look at this, this one in particular. So that was this one right here. What if I accidentally, if I wasn't thinking and I said, oh, well, I'll just type in that. And I got negative 
1.414. No, actually, if I wasn't thinking, I'd be typing in uh, this, 0.92. Um, how would I know something's wrong? Yeah, thank you. It's exactly what I was looking for. It's positive. Something like this is going to have to be to the left of zero. Otherwise, you're not going to have 90-some percent of the area to the right of that point. So it would have to be negative. So if you've got a positive value that's putting you over here, there's no way that 92% of the area is to the right of point or 1.41. It just can't be. And the quick fix is to say, oops, I, I forgot to change this. I'll just make that a negative. So, yeah, Z sub 0.05, um, you would need to do that with Z sub 0.9, or norm inverse of 0.95. So norm inverse of 0.95 comma 0 comma 1. And I think that's giving you about 1.65. Is that right? 1.64, 1.65, somewhere in there. Uh, 0.64. Yeah, 0.64. So 1.64. Did that answer your question? Okay. And there was one back here, too. I got it. I'm good now. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, let's... Keep going. Could you just re clarify how you get the, uh, the value from the thing under the Zeus, whatever it is? Um, one more time on that one. So uh, you have the original value here next to the Z. Like Z sub 0.02, for instance? Yeah, so you have that. And then uh, how do you get that from 0.98 and 0.2? So. Let's take a look at the Z sub 0.02, because I've got that one drawn. I think the first and most important part is to understand that that means the point that has 2% of the area in the right tail. How much area is underneath this curve altogether? One, area of one. So if 2% is in the right tail, then 98% is in the left tail. And Google works with what's in the left tail. So that's why and how we came up with the 0.98 is that we want to put in 0.98 so that Google says, oh, well, 98% of the area in the left tail? Got it. That's 2.05. All right, so it's Google's always going to work with the area in the left tail for these normal curves like this. So I'm still a little bit for you to so you know that there's point two. Well, so oh, wait, the area is one. one right? So yeah, one minus 0 0.02 is your 0 0.98. That's exactly where we're getting. Thank you. All right, you're you're welcome. No, I appreciate you asking your questions. All right. Um, Um, I'm just looking for uh, my sheet here. Um, yeah, no, we're going to finish up with example I on the back here. So, Abby, is that a question? Yep. Okay. Right. Let's remind ourselves something about percentiles. So this is problem number 37. I want to work with the 99th percentile. So I'll put zero here because that's the mean. The 99th percentile separates the bottom 99% from the top 1%. Where am I, where am I going to draw P sub 0.99? Is that going to be in the right tail or the left tail? It's going to be in the right tail. P sub 0.99. So that's going to be the point that has 1% of the area in the right tail. 
what z value am I going to write here? Z sub what? Yes, z sub 0.01, because there's going to be 1% of the area in the right tail. How would I look this up on Google Sheets, though? What would be... Now, remember, Google Sheets works with the area in which tail? The left tail. So how much area is in the left tail? 99, yes. So we want to find the area in the shaded region, the yellow shaded region, and that's going to be 0.99. So it's going to be norm inverse 0.99 comma 0 comma 1. I'm guessing about 2.33. So you work with these numbers too long and they, they stick with you. <laughs> All right. Uh, example. I number 39, no, 37 equals norm inverse. Uh, 0.99 comma 0 comma 1. Yeah, about 2.33. Are we okay with that one? Is everyone able to keep up with that that calculation? Ivy? I think I just need to do some more practice on my notes. Uh, but if you have a question here, I'd be happy to have it. So. Looking back here real quick, Z, uh, the 99th percentile means 1% of the area is here, and it separates it from the bottom 99% here. Now, Google works with the area that's in yellow. It says, all right, I'll tell you the area to the left of something. So that's, that's where I get that number from right there is the 0.99. And then that's the mean and the standard deviation of our standard normal curve, 0 and 1, respectively. So something still I can help out with? Or? Oh, I think I get it. Okay. Let's take a look at number 38. Uh, so this time we want to find the 10th percentile. Where am I going to draw the 10th percentile? All right, there is a 90 involved, but um, I think a couple of people hollered out in the left tail, and that's correct. So the 10th percentile is going to be here someplace. So P sub 0 0.10. How about my Z notation? Can anyone figure out what the Z notation would be for that? Yeah, z sub 0.9, which is kind of strange, but okay. It's just really practicing with this notation because that's going to tell you the area in the right tail. So the 10th percentile separates the bottom 10% from the upper 90%. Hopefully you know the difference between the 10th percentile and the 90th percentile. But that's z sub 0.9. As far as the problem itself is concerned, Google Sheets works with area in what part of the curve? The left or the right part? Left. left. So I want to type in norm inverse of what number? I want the area to the left of this point, which is going to be yeah, 10% or 0.1. So 0 0.1. Yeah, I don't remember this one. Um, equals norm inverse of 0.1, comma 0, comma 1. What's that? Inverse. You use the inverse if you're starting out with an area and trying to find the z value. If you're starting out with a z value and want to find the area, that's where you use norm distribution. 
So, good question. I'm going to... Sure. If you're starting out with the z-score and you want to find the area, that's when you're going to use norm distribution. If you're starting out with the area and you want to find the z-score, that's when you're going to use norm inverse. Good. Two more here. Problem number 39. And if we're clever on problem number 39, then it can also help us out with problem 40. And it can also, we can also get done with this really in one command, not two. We want to find bone density scores from the in the bottom 2% and the top 2% are used as cutoff levels that are too low and too high. Find the readings that are the cutoff values. So let's draw these. Zero. So problem 39, I want to find these values here. this value and this value, so that's 2% or 0.02, and that's 0.02. Now, as I said, there's a couple ways you can do this problem, and, you know, if you're clever, it can save you some work. But let me not lead this too far. I want you to think about this. I want you to participate. What are you going to type in? And we're starting out with an area, so we're going to use the norm inverse. Well, how are you going to start this one? Uh, it's a great question. 0.96 is the area in the middle, but that's not how Google Sheets works, right? Um, one more time, Ivy. 0.98. All right, Z inverse of 0.98. That's going to give you 98% of the area in the left tail, and that will give you this point. Adel? Mm. Well, let's see. Let's type in 0.98, and we'll get this one right here. That would be Z sub 0.02. And I'm not sure what that one is. But what was your suggestion again? Yes. Well, it's, it's not a subtraction problem um, to get the, the bottom one. No, I mean after you get the bottom, you subtract the Oh, uh, we're actually not going to have to do any subtraction at all. Yeah. Wouldn't it just be like... Yeah, there you go. All right, so let's do the top one first. Equals norm inverse of 0.98 comma 0 comma 1. So 2.05. So 2.05. Now there's a couple ways to get the other one. Victoria just mentioned it. Let me see if anyone else can come up with it. But I want the area of this one with 2% of the area in the left tail. So that's going to be norm inverse of what? Negative. Mm, no, the, the number has, has to be a percentage between 0 and 1. So it would probably give you an error if you did that. Would it be 0.02? 0 0.02, because it's just 2% of the area in the left tail. But does anyone see a, a way that we could have saved ourselves some work? When you type that in, what are you getting? Negative 2.05. How could we have saved ourselves some work on this one? Yeah. Remember that these are going to be mirror images of each other. The normal distribution is symmetric. So... The point on the normal curve with 2% of the area in the right tail is going to be a mirror image of this point on the left tail. 
So you, you could have just used this one and then did the negative to get this, or this one and the opposite would give you this. Go ahead. Because uh, I'm not sure what that would give you. They give you 0.04, and then what are you going to look up? I mean, I'm not sure where you would go with that. Um, I understand that that gives you, that means that there's 96% in the middle. But if you type in norm inverse, if you type in line inverse of 0.96, it's going to give you, you know, this point over here, that 96% is to the left. It's not going to put it in the middle. So it doesn't divide it up for you like that. Last but not least, problem number 40 is kind of the same. It's just that our cut points have now been changed to 3% on either end. So see if you can't finish this one maybe a little faster than you did the last one by finding those cut points that have 3% of the area in the left and right tails rather than 2%. So 0 0.03 here and 0 0.03 here. Not an accident. <laughs> All right, so let's see. I got a couple of values in the chat, maybe. Um, all right. Uh, uh, so, one way to do this is the norm inverse function, except what value am I going to put if I wanted to get z sub 0.03? 0.97. 0 0.97, yes. And when I do that, let's see, I get about 1.88, I think. Yeah. All right, excellent. So um, number 40 equals norm inverse 0.97 comma 0 comma 1, and bam. Now, I don't need to do that again, do I? No. No, not really. 1.88. This one's going to be negative 1.88, right? Just going to be the opposite of that. By the way, this is z sub 0.03 because there's 3% of the area in the right tail. What would I write here for z? z sub what? 0.97. Beautiful. Well done. Well done. Are you feeling okay about these? Thumbs up. All right. I can't overemphasize how important it is to be good at getting these numbers into and out of Google Sheets uh, or some technology. Understanding what's going on here with percentiles and how you work with these commands, because you're going to use it a lot. It's just going to be a small part of other problems. So that's why we spent like most of an entire day on this one section, is because I want to make sure that you're comfortable with this stuff. All right, good luck with it.